than God. And no matter where you are in your personal life, God is there. Uh -huh. David said, Though I make my bed in hell, well, thou art there. there. And if your life is so messed up that you that you can't see a way out of it, God has a way out of it, That's whether right. you see it or not. That's right. And all you have to do is put your trust in Him. I found that out. I don't have to work my problems out. I don't have to stay awake at night, moaning and groaning in agony. All I have to do is learn to put my trust in Him. That's it. Put it in Him. And believe in that, that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. That He is a good Father. He's not, you know, could, well, there's a lot that I, I need to say this morning. And, you know, hopefully it's going to come out okay. And hopefully you guys will be blessed by it. But we're going through lots of things in our lives. But all things work to the good. Yes. All things work to the yes. good. Amen. Now, I went through something in my, in my physical life in the last month or five weeks. That was one of the hardest things I've ever done that didn't involve pain. And I thought I was doing a good thing. <laughs> I, thought I, was doing, I thought I was helping my life to get straightened up right about it, and I dug myself a big hole. But, but in that, see, I, and you know, I glorify God for it. You know, people say I glorify God for my trial, and I've always said, you know, no. No, no, no nobody's that safe, come on. All right, well, I glorify God that I'm going through a trial. Praise God. God. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> that's like going, oh, I'm glad the kids made a mess of this house today. I get to clean it up. No, 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 come on, let's get real, let's get real. But I'll be honest with you, this was one of the hardest things I've ever been through, and I praise God for it. Because, and I really do, I'm not just saying that, because I have learned so much. And God has opened up so much to me spiritually. So the natural body was afflicted, but the spiritual man got fed. Hallelujah. And you know what's really important. So what happened was I took a job working for the Bloomington Herald delivery <laughs> paper. That don't sound bad. And Brother Warren delivered papers. That's not that bad, is it, Brother Warren? But for me, for me, it was bad. And... Uh, so what happened was we need we needed some income. Who don't need extra income? And I've always wanted to do this. Be my be my own boss. You know, look to the I always look to the positive. If it was a good thing, I try to find it, which is good. That, that's good. But sometimes the bad you don't look at the bad things hard enough, you know. So I took this job in the paper out and I delivered from the Monroe County line north. So Legendary Hill, Turkey Track, all the country roads, Oak Day Road 37, Lantern Hill and Painted Hills, and all Martinsville, and Lake Edgewood. And that don't sound bad. And it's seven nights a week. It was 30, 30 straight days, or whatever. And uh, you go down there and you get the papers at 1.30 in the morning, and you have to have them delivered by 6. Now that sounds pretty simple. You put your foot on an accelerator, and you stop, and you put a paper in there, and you go on. Well, that's... That's not exactly the way that it is. And, and after a couple of days of it, I knew straight away that this wasn't going to work for the time. I mean, I, I'm not a genius, but I figured out that I wasn't going to make very much money. I was going to tear my car up. I'm going to destroy my family life. I'm not going to be able to travel with the band. Okay? And when everybody else is awake, I'm going to be asleep. My, my kids, Ashley and Andrew, like they have to go to work, so I go home and lay down for a half hour, and then, Dad, can you take me to work? And I have to get right back up. And I, there was lots of things when I didn't get no sleep, and I mean, it really got, it really got pretty bad. And then when I could sleep, you get so nervous that you can't sleep, because you, you know I have to go to sleep. If I don't go to sleep in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to get two hours of sleep, you know, that kind of thing, and then you can't sleep. It turned my life upside down. Absolutely and totally. And I praised God for it. <laughs> and after two days or three days, I figured out that this wasn't going to work. Now, the thing you do is when you start it, you tell them guys that you'll work for, you'll give them 30 days notice. Right? And, and you do that before you know that you don't want to do it. And now, as an adult, an American, I'm free, I could have just walked off the job. I could have just said, forget it, I'm not giving you 30 days notice. But we try to, I mean, you try to do what's right. And, and so I said, you know, I'll, work, I'll give you 30 days notice. And he said, well, just work till the end of the month. So that's like 20 some days notice. I got a couple of days off for good behavior. <laughs> and so I persevered through it and tried to get victory in it. 
And it was up, like Brother Pat said, it was an uphill fight with a little bitty stick. I mean, it, was a, it was a struggle. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about this morning, is that in that, I learned so much. Um, I, I did, that, she just read that because I didn't have anything to read. Um, <laughs> see where I went, sorry. You know, we go through things in our lives sometimes that overwhelm us. But you know, when, when they said you got to do it for a month, if you try to do the whole month in one big chunk, Brother Pat, you can't. And so I had to do it a little chunk at a time. I had to do it a day at a time. And you get down to doing it a road at a time, a house at a time, one newspaper at a time, you get through it however you want to get through it. And now that I'm through it, you know what? I'm free. <laughs> I mean, you got to think about this, because how many times have you heard you're in the midst of a trial? I was in the midst of a trial, and I didn't have no joy in that trial. It was dry. It was hard. Yeah, it was a hard taskmaster for this old man. But, see, there's an end of the trial. There was an end. And in whatever trial we go through, it may be sickness, it may be financial problems, it may be problems within your family, it may be problems within yourself. But see, you don't see, I knew that I had 30 days. And sometimes in our trial, we don't know if we got 30 days or two years or 10 years. We don't know. And we get weary and well doing. But the thing is, there is an end of the trial. Absolutely. We may not know when it is, just like we don't know when Jesus is coming back, but he's coming back. And in your trial, there will be an end. And I guarantee you, when my trial ended, I had joy. Unspeakable. I am so happy. <laughs> I, and in the end of your trial, you will get joy. You will get a paycheck from God that stamps joy. And you'll get a testimony. And you'll get a witness. And you'll get understanding. And you'll get strength. And God will keep you in every step of the way. The footsteps of the righteous of the Lord are ordered by Him. you got to understand that. If you're, if you're in the midst of something, you're not in there alone. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fiery furnace, but they was not there alone. And they were delivered, and they were glorified in God. Well, God doesn't change. You can say, I'm just this, brother, I'm just this poor brother here, I'm not nobody. Who do you think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was? Four brothers, that's right. They was just people. <laughs> you can put your name in there. Yeah. Well, I'm not Moses. Well, you may be. You may be. Who was Moses? He wasn't nobody. Amen. But God made him somebody. That's right. Well, I'm not nobody, but God can make you somebody. Yes, he can. So, in the midst of this great trial that I'm now delivered out of, I praise God. I am so happy. And I went back to work at Hopkins. Because, and see now, it wasn't very long ago that I didn't want, I didn't want to work at Hopkins. I don't want to work there. It's hot. It's a junkyard. Them guys don't get along with me very good. You know, whatever. I had a hundred thousand reasons why I didn't want to work there. And you know what? I'm so happy to go back there. <laughs> well, I, well, Pat, how many times has he said we need a paradigm shift? Brother Jerry had a little paradigm shift. <laughs> had a little attitude adjustment. Yeah. And I found out Monday through, Monday through Friday, in the daytime, whatever I want to work at $10 an hour, that's not too bad. That's a whole lot better now than what I thought it was. So I had an attitude adjustment. So you know what? All things were pretty good. Now I went back to something that I really didn't want to go to, but that now I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm not going to go drudging anymore, and now I can bring forth a better witness. Because we can't bring forth a good witness when we're, when we're upset and angry and right. feeling sorry for ourselves. That's right. I mean, when Paul and Silas were cast in jail, the first thing they had to do was stir themselves up. Yes. And once they did that, then the angel shook the jail, and they, they seen people saved. That's right. Yeah, I said all that to say this. On the job, you had to be done by 6 o'clock. And the first night that I did it by myself, and I did they got a home route and a store route. So you deliver to people's houses, and you deliver to, like, the, the CVSs and the marathons and the big foot and all that stuff around there. The first night, I didn't even get, have to go to the stores because the other guy did it. And I'm supposed to be done by 6, and I got done at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, 10 and a half hours late, and I, had a, I, should, I didn't have to do an hour of the job. And I was hysterical. 
That was the first night. <laughs> and so you can imagine, I mean, because you're under self-pressure. There's nobody riding with the car, but you know you're supposed to be done by six, so you have to push yourself. Mm -hmm. And I found out that job, that's what that is. You push yourself. Yes, you get to be your own boss. That's good. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it isn't. Because uh, if your car breaks down, who are you going to call? You know? You ever call your boss? No. We got stuck in Plainfield. Do it as a call, Dave. You know? Our car broke down, and I had to work it out. And I had to come over here and borrow his car for 10 days. I mean, we were just, it was just a myth of a big mess, but somehow God worked it all out. So you're supposed to be done by six. The second night, me and Katrina went to some, see, you get in town, and like they will say, turn left on sunset, and it's 1045 sunset. And that sounds easy. You know, go down, go down, do a drive till you get to Burton Lane, and it's 804 Burton Lane, and back up in that guy's yard and go to 1060 Wayne Street. Now, that don't sound bad. But at 3 o'clock in the morning, you think you can see people's addresses on their houses? <laughs> they all look the same. It's like China. They all look the same. <laughs> and I, I had to get out of my car and walk up on people's front porches and look and see what the number on the house was. It wasn't easy. And when you got 155 houses to remember, you ain't going to memorize them all. I got, you know, the first couple of nights, first couple of weeks. So the second night in some of the areas I had drove out like Frederick Trailer Court and some of those trailer courts over there. Me and Katrina went after she got off work and we went over there and we kind of scoped it out, you know. And I started looking for landmarks. Like this is right after, like over here on the, by the hospital, one of my guys, there was a basketball court right before I got to his house, the guy had a basketball thing. So I couldn't remember the guy's house, but I remember when I seen the basketball thing, it was the next house. Okay, or we go, it's the second house on the left, where the guy has a satellite dish on his roof, and you start looking for things. And so on my little sheet, because you got like 16, 16 page printout of everybody, what you, of instructions, right? And so you're driving and you're just flipping through them. I would write, you know, it's on the left hand, it's on the right hand, it's after the stop sign, it's a long time, so I know I could drive really, really fast for a while. That kind of thing. I started making myself landmarks. And after a few days, I got down to where I was getting done by 6.30 to 7 o'clock, which I think that's reasonable. Uh, now, some nights, when I went with him, the moon was out, it wasn't raining. It was it. I decided to sit there and hand him the paper when I rode with the guy, right? Well, the first couple of nights I went, it was foggy. Now, foggy can mean lots of different things. But when you're trying to deliver paper, that means you can't see where you're going. <laughs> and when you're there, you don't know that you're there. <laughs> and so you have to drive. I mean, I'm down there by the White River, down in those lowlands, <clears throat> Lantern Hills. Lantern Hills don't even exist when it's foggy. <laughs> and out here, Painted Hills and out Lake Edgewood, you know. And so that, that has something somewhat to do with how fast you're able to go. If I can't see from here to the door, then I slow down. Maybe you guys don't. And so some nights it was foggy, one night it was rainy. Now you don't know what fun is until you ride with 300 newspapers in your car with the rain coming in with the windows rolled down. <laughs> that makes it interesting. And you have to put all the papers in those plastic bags, you know. And so I struggled through those things, see, because I knew I had 30 days. Sentence, 30 days. <laughs> and so I would get up, now I would I would get a couple hours of sleep in a day, two or three hours in the daytime, and then Katrina, bless her heart, would let me go to bed like at 9.45, 10 o'clock, 10.15, and she would set the alarm clock for 12.45 and wake her, because I can't hear the alarm clock, she would wake herself up and get me up, and then she'd go back to bed. That's how good a wife I have. <laughs> and, and so I would get down, I would leave like at 1 o'clock and get down there at 1.30, get your papers and go deliver your route. Well, most of the times the papers were done at 1.30 or quarter till 2. Now, one morning, I, the papers didn't come out till 15 till 4. I sat down there for two and a half hours and waited for the papers. Now, 15 till 4, and I have to be down at 6. I don't even, 15 till 4, I can't even get to my route until quarter after 4. 
And I said, oh, I'll just disinsect the table for something. <laughs> On the route, there, there are, you guys have all seen the mailboxes, right? You just go by and you drive it. You do that a lot of times. Sometimes you just throw it in people's driveways. There's always four or five people that want you to put it on their front porch. Okay? And there's one guy that you had to put it on his front porch on his milk carton, okay? I mean, it had to be on the milk carton on his front porch. And so you got to stop your car and you get out and you run up there and you put it on the guy's front porch and you get back in your car and you go on down the road. Well, one night when it was really foggy and I was running late, I was supposed to put it on this lady's front porch and I just throwed it in her driveway. Oh. And the next night I went to work and there was a big complaint thing on my thing. Please put the paper on the front porch like you always have. Well, first of all, I always haven't done it. Okay. Secondly of all, I was in a hurry. <laughs> but now you can't call that lady up and tell her that. Okay? You have to say, she's paying for a service, she thinks it's a reasonable service, and I'm supposed to reasonably satisfy what she wants me to do. Now, in myself, you get mad. Now, why right does that lady have to tell me to put it on her front porch when I'm in a hurry? <laughs> you know, she's probably 35 years old in better health than I am, and she's able to go out there on her driveway and get that newspaper, right? Now, is that reasonable to think? Oh, yeah. On the other hand, she may be 85 years old and took this paper for 50 years and be barely able to make it to her front porch. This is true. And how do I know? I'll take that into consideration. <laughs> so that was one night when it was foggy or whatever. Now, the, the morning that it, the paper didn't come out to a quarter to four, there was no way this lady was somewhere in town, and there was no way I could have drove straight down here and not made it. So that morning, I throwed it on her driveway because I was two and a half hours late to start with. Now, is it better? That I, and I mean, I was throwing people, I wasn't even putting them in the boxes, I was just throwing them next to the boxes. I mean, I, was, I wasn't even slowing down or stopping, I was just going by and flinging them. Because <laughs> you're supposed to be done by six. Okay? It's understandable. I was doing the best that I could. Now, now, consider this for a minute. Is it better that I upset this lady by throwing her in her driveway and being even more late, or is it better that I just do her like everybody else and get as many people as soon as I can? I mean, should 150 other people be put out because this lady needs special attention? Or should this lady just be part of the group tonight and let me get the other 100 people done as quickly as I can? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I thought it was reasonable yeah. just to do as quickly as I could. And that lady may have caught up there and personally talked to the manager of the Herald Times and said, look, I told this guy the other night to put it on my front porch and he didn't do it. And here it is two or three days later and he put it in my driveway again. He's in trouble. <laughs> now, is she justified in that? She, she doesn't know. Situation. She doesn't know your situation. She but is she justified in doing that? Liver. Probably. Would you have done that, Jennifer? Would I have done it? No. If, if you asked the guy, reasonably put on your front porch, and it's a reasonable request, and you're paying for that, for him to do that, right? And he doesn't do it one night. Where are you talking to me? No, I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, just say no. Okay. That way everybody, you know, yeah. even if you would, just say no, because it's not good. Of course I wouldn't. I understand. <laughs> now, th but question it in yourself. What would I do under those circumstances? I'd call. I, I expected him to do it. And they didn't do it twice this week. Now, I don't understand that. Now, we all know the world we live in. You cannot get good service anywhere. Right? You, go, you go to McDonald's and order something that needs a fork, and you won't get a fork. Katrina went to McDonald's and ordered, or Burger King and ordered those French toast sticks that get syrup and had to eat them dry because she didn't get no syrup in there. Now, you don't have to be a genius to figure if you get pancakes, you want syrup. You know? You cannot, but see now, I'm falling into this thing, I didn't give that lady the service that she asked me for. So really, she's justified in calling, isn't she? Of course she is. She is understand. In her mind she is, but not really. But she don't know the whole picture. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take your time, Jerry. You know. I'll cut it. Now, I have here a book, and I had to tear the front cover off because you guys would know what it was. But that's pretend this is the front cover. It's just a plain Jane book, right? Now, everybody in here is smart enough as Christians. Now, we're talking about being a Christian. Not to judge the book by the cover. Okay? God looks upon the heart. Man looks upon the outward appearance. That's right. Okay? So this is, that's the, boy, that's a junky, nasty-looking book. That can't be much. But now, see, we know not to judge it by the cover. Right? Florida West Coast Lake Scene. You see that? Real quick. Okay. Now it says peaceful Florida West Coast Lake Scene. Okay. Everybody see that? Yeah. I know it's in black and white. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. Good book, did it? Okay. What's this book about? What's that book about? Now, man looks upon the outward appearance. But now I went inside this book and, I, and I'm showing you something. What's this book about? Nature. Anybody want to guess? Uh, life in the Air Force. Obviously, <laughs> life in the Air Force. I mean, it's about something about Florida, right? It's about lakes. Maybe. Maybe. Might be about lakes. <coughs> Might be, okay. Yeah, you're right. Might be about travel. Might be about travel. Okay, this says University of Tampa. Built as a luxury hotel in 1891. And it's a picture of a beautiful luxury hotel in Tampa, Florida. Must be back to the Gulf Coast. Tampa, Florida. One more. One more. Now, we've been to Florida. This says sponge boat at Tarpon Springs, which is in, is in Florida. It's in Florida. Florida. Okay. Florida, Florida, Florida. Now this is about uh, boats and springs. This is about uh, University of Tampa. And this is about some guy on a lake scene. And all in Florida. What's the book about? Florida. Florida. If you guess it, you, if you guess it, I'll give it to you. <laughs> a book without a front cover with three pages for it. <laughs> Come on. Now, we should be able to use our common sense and figure out what this book is about. Now here we did not know, but now we're looking inside of it. What's it about? Yeah. Okay. What's it about? Him? Huh? Anybody want to guess? Florida. 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 Daisy? That's What's it about? We said from Florida. It's not Florida. Delivering newspapers. Yes. So it's about. What's it about? It's a recipe book. Uh, it's a recipe book? It's a recipe book. Well. It's a recipe book. From Florida. Matter of fact, there's recipes on the back of these pictures. Yeah, see, that's why I came in. How can that be? How can that be? Because we had this figured out. And now if I'd taken bets in here, if you had to bet, if I made you bet $10 on what that book was about, you'd be real wise to have said, recipe. Because you know Brother Jerry's not going to do this bet get here. Yeah, you would have said Florida. I would have bet Florida. But we would have been wrong. Is it, is it uh, Southern style seafood recipe? Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, you can have it. Yeah. <laughs> now Daisy will put that up and she'll make something out of that. <laughs> but see, we would have been we would have been wrong. Now we know not to judge by the outward appearance, but do we know not to judge when we think that we know something that we may not know? That's very true. Now that lady could have executed judgment on me for delivering her paper late and for throwing it in her driveway and got me fired and gave me a hard time 
but it wouldn't have been justified. That's right. <coughs> That's why love covers a multitude of sin. And if you don't have love, you can't cover sin. Because everyone in here can judge. And everyone in here, because we're human, we do judge. We do judge. But love has to overcome that judgment. Because judgment, you know, we think judgment straightens up. Judgment does not straighten up. Us executing judgment does not set things in order. Most of the time when we execute judgment, we put things out of order. I mean, who's ever been a new boss somewhere and go into a new business and say, I'm going to straighten this place out? I have done that. When I was managing Just Right, they sent me to Shelbyville because that store was a total mess, and I was supposed to go in there and straighten it up. And they, you know, you, you don't know anything about how that business has been run all those years. You know nothing about the people. You know nothing about the situation. You don't know anything about All you know to do is make the same sandwiches that you make over here. But other than that, you don't know anything. And you're supposed to go in there and straighten them up. You go in there and make a big mess. Everybody quit. Everybody hates you. You want to run it like you run this place, and it don't work that way. Who in here thinks they run their family the same way I run my family? Nope. I guarantee you that you don't. <coughs> but I don't understand why Brother Jerry has X problem when I don't have X problem in my family. Why did my why does my wife be a perfect wife when his wife is not a perfect wife? <laughs> I do not understand that. Yeah. See, you're executing judgment. And executing judgment will make you sit in judgment. And if you sit in judgment, you're really not doing what God would have us to do. Because love covers them all. If, if you see me up here, I'm the biggest disgraceful failure you've ever seen. You know what you're supposed to do? Love you. Love you. Amen! <laughs> love you. You better. Yes, sir. Because I may, you know the reason why I may be what I am right now? And this is honest truth. I find this to be true. If you have a problem in your life, a big failure in your life or whatever, and you have to you have to pour love upon that, God has given you opportunity to work love into your life. I found that out. Because one time I didn't have I had about this much love. And I had a whole lot of judgment. And I'm talking not very long ago, several years ago. And I was quick to judge, and I was quick to be hard, but I wasn't quick to forgive, and I wasn't quick to let my love cover the sin that was there. And so I had to suffer a lot in order to do what? Work love into my life. That's right, brother. Because without love into my life, I'm nothing. Yes, sir. What does the Bible say we are without charity? That's right. Come on. Zero. See, it's not the judgment that God's worried about. God will execute judgment. He's able. Matter of fact, the Bible says, and see, this is important. If we judge ourselves, we need not be judged. Which means, if I keep a handle on myself, about what God deals with me about, which may not be the same thing he deals with you about. But if I try to line up to what God would have me to do, then I'm actually self-judging myself and keeping myself in line. If I do that, I don't need to be judged by God. Don't get in that cookie jar. If they don't get in the cookie jar, they won't be in trouble. <laughs> but if they do get in the cookie jar, they're going to be in trouble. And so I found out that we need to judge ourselves whether we are or are not in the will of God. That's what he's talking about. Judge yourself. It's, it's better, it's better to, to uh, I don't need it. It's uh, being faithful. Now this, this is the easy one. It's being faithful. Brother Jerry is faithful because he's here three nights a week. <coughs> this ex-brother here is not faithful because he's here <coughs> once every three weeks. <coughs> now, is that a true statement or not? Situation. <coughs> it cannot be because there is no true statement. Ex-brother may be doing twice as much being here once in every three weeks 
then why, brother, may be here being three times a week because we're not we're not the same. <coughs> we're not in the same situation. We're not the same person. And you cannot you cannot bring judgment because judgment will lift this brother up <coughs> and judgment will tear this brother down. He's here three times as often. He's three times a Christian. No, he's not. This is a fundamental thing in God. Now, I would that he would be here more. But if he's not here more, he's no less than I am. That's true. Absolutely. Great job, brother. Because different circumstances. Yes. Sometimes I'm not here as often as I was. This, mm -hmm. Guess how many times I was here the past week? Zero. Zero. <laughs> now, but guess how many times, guess how many times I've missed in five years? Guess how many times I've missed in five years that we've been here? That I haven't been with a band or somewhere else? Less than five. Maybe nine. Almost nine. Now I've missed more in one week than I have in five years. Now, that's not right. <laughs> we both missed a Thursday night. <coughs> they baptized four people Thursday night. Uh, they tell me see, that that baby now, and that woman is wonderful. But see, here, here's the thing. I have my place. And I have no doubt about that whatsoever. And I'm happy with my place. But you know what? I wasn't here and the church went right on and I knew that it would. I wasn't here either. But my heart was. I wanted to be. But see, but there's nothing wrong with that. But see, I, I, I won't judge none of it. Don't judge any of it. Because she stands to God and so do I. And she's a Christian and so am I. And she's doing what she thought was right and so was I. Okay? And there are people that was here. You were doing what and see, I come to understand when, when uh, what's his name? Who was here and played the bass on the Sunday school superintendent for I was? John. John. When John was here. And when John left, I had a big growth spurt because he took a ministry out of this church and it gave me room to, it grew, gave me room in my ministry to grow. Okay. And so Brother Jerry understands if I wasn't here all last week, oh man, the church just stopped dead in its trap. <laughs> no. You know what? It was opportunity for someone else I to step up. Too. This is true. I mean, why should I get to do this all the time? Uh, now, it's good that I do, and I enjoy that I do, but you know what? There's other people here that can do the same thing. Okay. Okay. And I found out when, when Pastor wasn't here, people had to step up. Yeah, that's right. When you guys you know? Yeah. And when, when you guys were in Florida, Brother Warren came and guess who the music was? Yeah. Brother Warren. Yeah. And he's very capable. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's no reason for us to say, well, it's Brother Pat and Mark and Jerry, and that's it. No, no, no. That's not right. I wouldn't want to stay with David. He's going to, David's the only one in my family can do everything. We'll keep the other kids smashed down, and they don't get to do nothing. No, I want David to become the fullness of his life, and actually to get the fullness of her life and every other one of my yeah, children. Right. Well, I want that as Christians, too. That's right. Every one of us has a calling and gifts, and there's no reason that any of us should not be able to use them. That's right. And you, we should feel free to use them, not bound, not bound, not have the opportunity to do it. No, you should do it. Absolutely. Absolutely, you should do it. Because the more you do, the more you grow. The more you grow, the more your, full your joy will become. That's fine. And one day I couldn't figure out three chords better, Pat. I know. And now, I mean, I'm not the, like the guy from Steinsville. He was up here cording the bass and everything else. I mean, I was like, you know, I don't even understand the concept behind that. But I get around better than I used to. You do a fine job. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you can make yourself happy. And see, as Christians, it's the same thing. You know, the more you get into it, the yeah, more you practice right. it, the more you mess sure. around with it, the more comfortable you feel. You learn little secrets all the time. I learned something the other day that I never knew before. I hear him do something, and I say, you know, there's something that goes in there, and then you start messing around with it. Now, I kind of lay back when we record, because I don't want to mess up too bad. But when we're live and we're not recording, I get over there and make mistakes just because I'm trying to figure out new things. Yeah. It's a good thing. But you know what? We go on. We just play and go on. That's right. And so it's good. And so that's why you cannot have judgment in anything because we don't know. We know in part, we see in part. We thought we knew what the book was and we were wrong. We thought we know what this sister's doing and we're probably wrong. We think we know Brother Jerry and you probably don't know me at all. Because we just see. And we, we know not to judge this, but we need to understand not to judge this either. 
Not to judge the inside things either. That's right. We love it. We love it. And we use it. Daisy will use that book. Okay? So it's important that we understand that we love one another. That's our that's our calling. Amen. Love Amen. one another. It's all in that. That's it. It's all, all in love. that. Yes. It is. Absolutely all in love. And so the judgment does bring separation. It brings hard feeling. It brings hurt feeling. And love covers all that. Yes. If you love someone, you're not hurting their feelings. But if you accidentally hurt your feelings, you'll apologize. That's right. I have the best intent. Sometimes I've had the best intent in a situation and I'm still messed up. But we're human. And so God is so good. And that, that's, God is just so good. And I learned a lot of this. serving God and, and one way we talked about was uh, spreading love. Some people have the job of just praying. Some people are, we talked about Daniel. That was his job. He right. was an excellent prayer warrior. He got him into trouble too. But, but he didn't care because, because of his faith in God. He took yeah. care of him. We talked about some people are just like door greeters. Some people just, just simply a kind word and a smile that that's their job. And our, everybody's job is a witness and just to spread love. And so this song is called Clapping Hands, and it's about spreading the love of Jesus. Can I have that one? Sure.